Hurry up. Go. Go. Go, they're coming. Hurry up now, they're coming. We all reached the edge of this lake, and suddenly we heard the shouts of people chasing us. At a kind of peak moment when you realize there's nowhere else you can turn, behind you are chasers, in front of you is water, a gunshot goes off. Everybody starts to jump into the water. It doesn't even matter if you know this is a simulation. Your reflexes take over. An Underground Railroad reenactment is an outdoor activity in which usually students go out into the woods and spend one or two hours playing the role of fugitives from slavery. I was thinking a lot about what I was going to write as I was going through the experience. Is this realistic? Is this positive? Is this a fitting commemoration of fugitives from slavery? But the meta-thinking shuts down when you have that fight-or-flight response and you're kind of in the swamp. The two words that come up most often surrounding Underground Railroad reenactments are trivialize and traumatize. This was all part of a slavery reenactment, but the family says it crossed the line. Third through fifth graders were split into various groups, including slaves. Seventh graders um, have, have racial slurs, you know, hurled at them. The fact that they use the N-word, I mean, how dare you do that, say that to my child? I had become aware of this as a kind of controversial program where white instructors were telling black kids that they were fugitive slaves and they had to run away. The instructors were their masters. It just seemed like a completely harebrained scheme to me. It seemed like something offensive to me. So we attended a simulation run by the Kamau Kambui Center for Cultural Learning. This program, which is the longest running in the country, has remarkably managed to keep conducting this simulation without backlash, whereas across the country, this program is in decline. So once your blindfold's on, I want no further talking. It's time to get serious now. Participants spend the next one or two hours being chased by catchers. They never appear face to face, but you can hear them in the distance. Come on! running from station to station, meeting conductors, abolitionist characters. Asking you to show them the right way. So I decided from that moment on, I was gonna fight slavery. Henry David Thoreau, Harriet Tubman. I'm the last passenger. I was about to start then, I'm about to start with you now. It's time to move, come on. There was a moment when we met Lucretia Mott. I believe that in passivity, we are just as wrong as those committing injustices. For, for the kids. I could see people beginning to wonder what would happen next and, and realizing there was kind of nobody in sight except the group, which is, I think, what the experience is supposed to create. There's a part where we go through the water. You can really feel it because you can't fake getting wet. Having this experience as something people can really internalize, I think it goes beyond what, what I know you can get out of a book. I think there's also an intangible element to why the Twin Cities program has escaped controversy. And that's, I think, because this is a program that is really rooted in the black community there. When I looked into it, I was kind of startled to find out how it originated. It was created, as far as I can tell, by a man named Kamau Kambui in the 1970s. He is involved with the Republic of New Africa, one of the lesser known black power groups in 1981, he kind of reinvents himself. And what his son told me is he went from being a hardcore revolutionary to a hardcore humanist. 
He becomes an outdoor educator with black youth nonprofits in Minnesota, and he starts the Underground Railroad program in the mid-1980s. Tonight you have the opportunity to feel the Underground Railroad. He saw this as a way of exposing young black kids to the outdoors, but also introducing them to African-American history at the same time. In all of our bloodlines, we've got stories where people overcame to get us where we are today. I think it's important that we just understand that we come from strong stock. In a kind of safe space, living history can be an aid to teaching the history of enslavement. So, Kambui's program became very popular in the late 80s and early 90s. Kambui describes the simulation as an exercise to counter racism. It was featured on the radio and on television, and also he was teaching it to outdoor instructors across the country. And what began to happen is that the Underground Railroad reenactment spread to YMCA camps and it spread to Nature's Classroom, which began running reenactments in 480 schools throughout the country. Really what began as a local black community program was copied throughout the country. Reliving history is a viable activity. The director of Nature's Classroom, he estimated that at least a million kids had participated. When you add dozens of summer camps across the country, sometimes for more than a decade, you are looking at millions of kids who grew up with this experience. A lot of people tweet or post on Reddit, did anyone else have to pretend to be a fugitive from slavery when they were in elementary school? Like, or was that just me? It's almost like a tall tale that this has existed and they've had such a big influence on American culture that has not yet been fully recognized. Education centers traditionally have all white staff. Right, and they train them up on to do the railroad and you sometimes have white staff chasing black kids through the woods and that goes really bad. It's hard to talk about the African-American experience in an experiential way without any African-Americans. We've got some pretty strict rules about how we behave ourselves. We never use the N-word. We don't catch anyone. We dwell on the freedom as opposed to, to slavery. And so I've never heard of someone who was anything other than, than empowered by the experience. I'm someone who has enslaved ancestors. My great, great, great grandfather, he did flee from his plantation in Virginia and cross over to Union lines in the last years of the Civil War. So I did reflect on the fact that this was a history that I felt personally connected to. I'm a lawyer, I'm not a foo-foo sort of guy, but I feel like we tap into the spirits of our ancestors who are out in the woods. And do you think participants feel closer to their ancestors? I absolutely do. I think it's the wrong question to ask, can a program like this approximate uh, the experience of real fugitives? Because the answer is, of course it can. What defined the experience was the consequences that they were facing if they were caught. But I don't think that's what reenactment is supposed to do. So many major religions involve observances that commemorate suffering in the past, whether it's in the Last Supper, whether it's Palm Sunday or Hanukkah, and these rituals where people will symbolically partake in a vast suffering that they as individuals have no frame of reference for, but it still feels important to them to commemorate it and to symbolically participate. Single file line. Experiencing that kind of disorientation and helplessness in a controlled setting is a powerful experience. Like a lot of practices of commemoration, it's kind of a small piece of the real experience that you're symbolically repeating. Two.